he's good. He's got the all clear and um, rearing to go, and that's what we want. And the rumour about Real Madrid, obviously, so isn't true at all. There's so many rumours. They things are still at the delicate stage. There's ongoing talks every day. I suppose if you're aware, we've we've rejected um, a couple of bids and uh, a couple of counter bids again. We've rejected, so um, it's ongoing. Look at so, I suppose look at the bottom line is it'll happen. You know, from my own point of view, we have a very busy week. Bray obviously on Monday, and obviously the cup game next Friday. So we have three big games in the week. So you know we need all our our, our bodies. So it, look at it'll it'll happen. But um, I suppose from our own point of view, we're in no rush to to push it over the line just at the moment. And with Fellas off with suspension this week, he's definitely be needed. Oh, well, we have um, Colin is suspended, Billy is out, and Bucks. Um, so that's three, and uh, we need we need everyone. You can see it's it's um, the games are coming thick and fast. The fact that you're up in Derry on Friday, uh, we're travelling tomorrow, and um, obviously come straight back after the match. Match Monday, it's you know it's a tough it's a tough weekend for us, and then obviously recovery. Try and get ahead of next week's Bohemians match in the cup. So you know it's three three huge games, but obviously for us it's just concentrating on Friday night because after last week's win, you know Derry's form at home has been fantastic. Peter's turned them around. You know they beat UCD six one. They beat Bowes four 0 They're scoring goals. Scored nine goals in Europe. You know so they're they're really on a high. You have to bring it, breathe new life into them and um, very strong local team, very attacking and um, we know how difficult it's going to be in. I suppose look at after last week it just means we must keep our concentration and we have to give a top top performance to try and get a result up there. Injuries apart from the long term uh, Darren Murphy and Mike Crafter? Uh well we, we Darren this week has, has um agreed to finish with the club and um he sort of um, his contract has been has been terminated. Um obviously with his, his shoulder injury, um he's gonna be out for the next three months, so um um, he asked us to cancel his contract, so medically we're still going to give him the care and attention that we can, hoping that maybe that um, come next January, maybe when pre-season comes around, that he'll be he'll be available or back to back to train. But obviously, he's had a, he's had a problem with his shoulder on a, on a couple of occasions through his through his career. So um, he's just going to monitor see how it goes. So so Darren isn't even he's going to has no chance of future wins anymore because his contract is terminated. Rob Lehan is the other lad who's still out. Um, yeah. prob- probably be probably Rob will probably be out for another probably three weeks, which is you know disappointing. I thought he might be back, but sooner than that. But um, and Gavin has a has a growing strain, but he's um he's travelling tomorrow. That's Friday, John. Um, I suppose it's great to get a win in such circumstances. Like I suppose everyone knows late winners but you have to go through 90 minutes of kind of anguish to get to that stage I suppose you prefer to have a match thrown up but a win like that can really boost the team like especially yeah. coming coming the back of the, the Dundalk game Absolutely I suppose a win every week is great but I think you know the, the big thing about last Friday night was that even though the crowd was 3,500 it sounded like it was 6,000 it was a bit yeah. like the week before because the noise levels were absolutely fantastic in the last particularly last half an hour and and then when the goal went in, the you know the and even going out of the ground, and we were in the dress rooms a- afterwards, and it took probably seven or eight minutes before we could even talk. The noise yeah. was still humming around the ground. It was a fantastic feeling. But yeah, I think from the week before, the, the real disappointment after um, playing reasonably well and and and, and equalising and then conceding, then the goal at Pats. And I suppose to be fair, in the Pats match, it was very very tight. There wasn't much in it. There was we both had chances, and. It got to the stage in the second half where I felt the game opened up that both teams actually really knew that they had to win. Yeah. You know, so a draw was it was really no good and it was that type of match. So um, you know, so I suppose Colin scored one of those goals in a lifetime. It was just absolutely tremendous goal and um, and certainly there's no doubt it did give us a boost to training this week. You could see there was a an extra step and you know, guys are there and you know, all of a sudden we're we're still there. We're six ahead of Rovers and Pats and we're four behind Dundalk and maybe people thought Dundalk had an easy one and draw then it just shows you there's still a lot of football to be played so it's given us a lift but you know you look forward you look forward into to next Friday night and obviously going to Derry which is probably one of the toughest fixtures you could have yeah. but you know and predicting the fact that they've been turned around but you know after winning last week it certainly puts in good in good form and um and it's kept us focused that you know there's a lot of football still to be played in this league and um 
you know, we've uh, we'll have a major say in it, and and who knows? Was it the best goal you've ever seen at Turner's Cross? I would say that it was. Um, I I actually think that even watching it on the night, it was a super goal. But it's only when you see it on on TV over and over again every time you see it it just gets better because yeah. it was it was just inch perfect to actually go the fact that it actually went in over the head of one of their players even on the line yeah. you know it just showed how, how precise it was it was just an absolutely fantastic goal and you know, goals like that are special and, and um, you know I've seen a lot of brilliant goals and, and uh, I've been looking to play with a lot of good guys who tell me that they've always got the best goals and I think <laughs> I think that was that was too, yeah. <laughs> well never, never never like that it was never fortunate enough but uh, it was just a, a fantastic goal I think the, the thing about it was and I keep saying is that if you look at the, the corner or whatever it was hit deep and it looked like the ball was gone and, and uh, Mark again incredibly kept the ball in play and, and I kept saying this even to the lads that they're the things the little decisions that you know you, you fight for that extra little ball or you make, make that extra effort to get to it and it creates a goal and several times this year, this year that has happened but you know look it was an absolutely special goal and you know to come out of the ground with the three points you know and the, and the expressions and the, the from the fans and the players and everything was just that's what it's about and that's what you that's what we all live for and going to Derry now, I suppose you'll be hopeful that the brand new pitch will be a bit better than the second game of the season. Well, to be fair, the brand new pitch is, is in top condition now, and and also to be fair to them, like they have you know a serious team, and you know compared to the start of the season, you know they brought back in a lot of local players, um, McNamee, who had been who had been injured for a long part of the the early part of the season, is back and he's flying in the middle of the park. They brought in Lowry. And who's played quite a bit in the north, and he's another local lad. And and they've they've sort of, I suppose, they've stopped conceding goals, and they're scoring a lot of goals. And Patterson is back on form, McElhenney is back on form, and obviously there was a lot of problems early in the season when Roddy was in charge, and Peter's got them got them playing, and they're very attack minded. Duffy is absolutely sensational on the wing, and um, you know we know that they're a totally different team than even we played in Turners Cross because yeah. we played in Turners Cross. Peter was after just after taking over, so there was there was still a bit of transition. He's had him now for the last probably three months, and um, you know the turned their form around. They're banging in goals, and it's 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 like the old days going to the brandy. But we know it's going to be a really really difficult game. We know it's going to be really tough, but at the same time, it's um, again it's another challenge for us, and it's 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 pressure on us to make sure that we can try and get a result to keep us in there. And when you're picking a team, do you have to have one eye on Monday night then as well, given the quick turnaround. Well, I don't, you know, in the sense that I suppose you, you, the, what Monday night does for you is that you, the game on Friday night is so, such a big game, you can't but totally concentrate 100% on it. Obviously, the fact the guys are, that are suspended, yeah. they come into contention for Monday night, so you know straight away that they're going to be involved. Other than are you looking for my starting team on Monday night, I have no idea. You know, Friday there's too much work for Friday night, the game is too big for us. And the fact that you're in the running of the league now, you know, you just have to keep your concentration, keep game focus and see can you keep getting the results because, as I said, there's a lot of football to be played. There are going to be some uh, funny results and, um, you know, if we can hang in there, who knows. John, with three, there's three suspended players there, three, obviously three regulars yeah. in the team week, week in, week out kind of thing. Are you comfortable or happy with the squad? You know, the squad you have known the players that are going to have to come in to take their places. I think you know the strength and depth. You feel happy with your strength and depth that you have. Yeah, well, I, th- I think to be to be to fair, look at cr- crucially, we have a very tight group of guys. You know, the atmosphere amongst them is fantastic. They're all good, good, good fellas. I keep saying we have no egos in our team. Every fellas, every fella works hard, and we have a great attitude there. Obviously, since the break, we've brought in players to boost our squad because up to the break, we were. Um, you know, we everyone knew we were a tight squad, but obviously, you know, the likes of I suppose. John O'Flynn coming in and Killian coming at the start, even Gavin Kavanagh, even Mike McSweeney, who made his debut last week in the league, they all came in boost. And then obviously in recent weeks, Ross came in, very experienced guys. So, you know, it, it's just given us the situation that when guys are missing or injured or whatever, now we have at least backup, which is good enough. Earlier in the season, we probably hadn't got that. And we were probably fortunate in the, in the sense that we didn't pick up any major injury at the time, whatever. But um, and it just shows you that now with the likes of Rob Lee Hand being out, who's after breaking through into the team and coming on quite a bit, we've been able to do without him. Whereas we wouldn't have been able to do without him before, even though I wish he was back. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? But because I prefer if everyone is fit and, and had more choices. But at the same time, we definitely have a much stronger squad than we had. Right. Right. Thanks. 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 I didn't win a League Cup. Okay. The only one I didn't win. It's the one I have to win. Better search gone west again. Um, what was the attraction in coming to join <coughs> Cork City? Just the same, like the passion, really. Like, cause um, obviously I was attracted to passion in Sligo when I, I was first thinking about going there. Um, spoke to John briefly, and he sold it very well. Like, it was a very passionate club, and obviously with the, the fans and everything, it was an obvious choice for me. Chasing titles and. Um, yeah, it was just the right choice at the time, and obviously I'm delighted to be here. And you were kind of in at the deep end, really, weren't you? That's it. I didn't get a chance to settle. It was literally train two training sessions, then banging uh, top of the table clash. Like so, I prefer it like that. Like then you don't have time to think about it around, so you're straight in and just get on with the job. Um, you play left back at nice. You're wearing number eleven. Like is that an indication that you see yourself further up the field? It was either 11 or 20-something, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, was, I took 11. I've always been 11. Obviously, I, I used to be a winger. Yeah. Um, kind of made that transition back into left-back, which I'm enjoying at the moment. And uh, I can play both positions. As long as I'm playing, I think I'll be happy. So we've got such good left-footers in the team as well. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's going to be good competition in the closing weeks, and I'm looking forward to it. And do you think that your experience can help the team, given that a lot of the fellas in the, the squad like are kind of competing for the title for the first time? Well, if you look at, compare the two squads with Dundalk and uh, Cork, like, we have a lot more medals in our squad. A lot more people have won medals in the squad compared to Dundalk, and I think that's going to put a bit of pressure on them because, obviously, they haven't won a league before. A lot of uh, yeah. players have, and um, it's great to have that experience, but at the end of the day, like, it's 90 minutes and football match, anything can happen, so experience goes out the window, really. So, um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Well, to move to Cork was it partly prompted by a kind of a, uh, the budget being slashed at Sligo because there was a big exodus of players. Like that was af- that was after me really because obviously like we had the European games. I asked to leave before the European games the start of July. So um, uh, that obviously I had the conversation with the club and they said for me to just stay till the European games were finished and then I've like I talked to whoever I want. So what happened after that I've no idea. They've got rid of some serious players there yeah. and uh, obviously even look at Limerick now. Uh, Limerick have signed very good players, and I think um, it's their mistake to let some of them players go. But uh, obviously, did, any, did any of these four seaters come? No, <coughs> no, no, not really. Like um, a couple of players weren't happy at at the time. Like, and uh, obviously, a few players asked to leave, and um, that happened. But obviously, some players were just told, "Look, you're not wanted here. You can leave." So uh, that's what happened with a couple of the boys, and uh, obviously, a few of them have expressed that in the papers as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on up there. No idea. Happy to be here and playing. Ah, I'm happy, I'm happy. We're in the title chase here, and obviously, I'm devastated. I'll be missing the cup match. Um, yeah, but it's exciting times. You just like we had decent crowds, but you know, you've come in at the top end down here. But obviously, the crowds in Turner's Cross have been fantastic. I experienced something we uh, 10 minutes before the game against Dundalk. I was sitting in change rooms, and I've never experienced noise like it. The place was bouncing like an air. Uh, yeah, it was it was an unbelievable experience, and then to go out into the little tunnel, out onto the pitch, it was yeah, it was a very very good experience, and hopefully like if we're winning, the fans will keep on coming, and to have five six thousand fans at a League of Ireland match is extraordinary. Like, and obviously if we keep winning, more fans will come, and that's what we're just trying to do right now.